Welcome back to CCRPG. Uh, we just watched our pilots uh, finish uh, taking back the gate station from Periapsis and uh, basically kind of push them out of the way. Uh, Periapsis is no longer in their way, preventing them from getting to uh, the meeting spot. As of now, uh, the uh blockage between you and your goal of getting Kolyan to the meeting has been removed. Um you are able to get back into your ship and where we left off last time uh is that you've just made it out of system to the next one. Um so you're able to take the time, get out of your suits, um and you're all in the hangar. Uh what's what's going on here? What's the um is the is the hacker guy still being annoying? I mean, he's still he's Ruination. still here. <laughs> Ruination conditioning. His his existence alone is enough. Well, I mean, you go to get out of the mech, and then he follows you. Uh, Eva, Evelyn will say to Ruination, so, so, "You got like a name, you know, like something that you know normal people have, or is it just as uh, I told hacker you." Name? My name is Ruination Conditioning. So, like, th that was what your parents ran with? Or, like, did you change your name? Like, what's the story here? What do my parents know about what my name was supposed to be? I mean, there's, like, a birth certificate, you know. It's usually how it goes, right? Well, yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I wouldn't know personally. You know what? I challenge you to find it. Good <laughs> luck. It's hidden behind seven proxies. <laughs> Mom, yeah. call me by my hacker name. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm calling. I'm, I'm call, yeah, I'm calling you Remy. That's that's not my name. It is. It is now Remy. Dine just rolls his eyes. Uh, I'll say. All right. Uh, show show Remy to uh, the room where we're keeping the other guys. Yeah. You you you'll love it. It'll be great. What other guys? Don't worry about it. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. It, what is this ship? You, he like starts looking around the hangar. He's like, do you have a giant secret compartment in your ship? You put a hangar in. I'm already pulling. I'm already pulling him to he, the. Um, he's like getting dragged by Evelyn yeah, by yeah. one arm <laughs> as he's like looking at <laughs> the inside of your cargo bag. Uh, <laughs> are, are the other guys still in the um, prison as well? Uh, you have them in individual rooms that are locked. Oh, I thought we put them in the How same. How many room. of those rooms do we have? I can't remember. Yeah, you, you have enough. Like it's they're just crew rooms, and you locked the doors on them. Like there's enough rooms on here to for like a full crew that would normally be used to man one of these vessels. So you probably have a good like. 12 to 14 crew rooms and that's not to mention like the amount of rooms that you just leave empty because you don't use them for their stated purpose I'll just say tell like as Evelyn's dragon I would say put him in one of the crew rooms now and lock the door we'll come and talk to him later once we've got things situated yeah I, I, I'm kind of surprised we, they didn't negotiate for the other two prisoners so we gotta figure out what to do with them too I guess don't we whoa 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 other prisoners how am I a prisoner as I as I throw him into a room and lock the door, and I'll say like that. Hey, what? As the door closes, make sure to cut the power. Yeah, I, actually, before I throw him in there, I'm gonna take his keyboard and then cut the power. What are you uh, cutting the power uh, you, to you the take, room? You, you mean? take his messenger bag off of him. Yeah, yeah. You shove him in the room, you mug him, and take his <laughs> messenger bag, <laughs> and then exactly you shut the do. door. Yeah, I, I I hang the bag like on a hook somewhere, and then I take a long swig of a flash that I have it on. I happen to have on me. I'll say, well, let's hope he doesn't hack the door open, <laughs> or he's got thermite or something. Uh, I'm just gonna tell Artemis, Artemis, uh. I expect a few bat uh, some battles in the future. Make sure you're up and running, and if there's any repairs that are needed, let me know. I'm going to go uh, tend to the crew while you do that. <clears throat> then, um, Dine is going to hunt down Evelyn and drag her to the, uh, the medical bay. Uh, 
for some treatment. And then after that, he's going to go to each of the other members and drag them to the medical bay for treatment, but one at a time. All right. So uh, you you get to work <laughs> on Evelyn uh, right away. You go find Evelyn, take her down to the med bay to, to do some work with her. Um, what about um, what about Rock and Astra? What are you two up to? Um, I'll, I, I'm, I'm going to head up to the bridge. I'll say, Rock, as soon as you're ready, um, come to the helm and uh, and and let's uh, focus on putting some distance between us and the gate. If Corsac's on their way, they might go through the gate too. So we don't want to be nearby if they if they try to follow yeah they should, they should be a minimum of at least a few days away and that's if someone happened to just be nearby all right but, that, but i'll head out that sounds good then but but as dine is like leaving the uh the hangar he yells at astro and rock come see me when you are ready those wounds need tended quickly uh, that, As he's that's, going to hunt down Evelyn. <laughs> that's true. Uh, and this isn't going to do me any favors when, I, when I'm when i performing my stunts. Okay, do you want to go first? Uh, well, let me get up to the bridge and check in with with uh, um, our, the other ship and Kalayan and Torse. Alright, well, I'll head to sickbay first then. All right. Uh, you head that away. Uh, Astro, as you head up to the bridge, um, uh, Torse is up there um, and you hear her turning around as you enter. Uh, she just goes, oh, Astro, I'm glad you're back. That was something. I have not been that close to like a full ship combat before. I'm just glad. And then she turns around and sees you. What happened to you? <laughs> uh, well, we were stuck in a room with some sort of uh, chainsaw maniac. Um, something straight out of a horror movie, honestly. Um, but we were able to sort of beat him into submission and negotiate uh, negotiate uh their retreat um but it it uh it hurt it hurt a lot astro's busy taking mental notes for his next horror flick yeah (laughs) okay well um uh kolayan from the relst has contacted us um he wants to know if we want to go back to you know, our protocol before, do you guys want him to come back over to the ship or should he stay in command of the Relst for now? Um, he wants to meet back up with you and discuss, you know, anything that could happen between here and there. You, you know, he wants to debrief, essentially. What should I tell him? Um, yeah, uh, to tell him, uh, tell him t- uh, that we're going to... Um, the the crew here is gonna uh uh get their themselves tended to since we took some injuries um in the in the fight um and we can debrief and say uh an hour or so um um i will i will hail him on his ship all right i'll let him know out of a uh, context there todd don't forget that she should probably be aware that we uh triggered a uh a Corsac um, uh, call yeah. from the center, yeah. so Torse should probably be aware of that. Yeah, yeah, especially if he ended up coming back this way. And I'll say, um, uh, uh, we we had to uh, we had to get out quick because when uh, we reactivated the gate, uh, that triggered a distress signal alert alerting Corsac. So they're probably on their way. I think we should be safe as long as we put a lot of distance between us and, and this gate though. But, uh, j- just, just so we're all, uh, we all know what's happening here. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll let client know. I, I assume that's what he wanted to do anyway. We're already moving away on, on our trip still. And, uh, you of course, um, uh, erased anything or brought back anything 
that could have implicated you or let Corsac know you were there, right? Well, uh, <laughs> I'll say, well, um, the uh, the the tech we we had a tech guy reactivate the gate, so we didn't actually interface directly. Um, I had hacked into their system a few times, but I think I I um, didn't leave any traces behind. Let's hope so. I guess she nods. Okay, I guess that's the best we can hope for. Tech guy? Yeah, he thinks he's some crazy badass hacker. Um, he basically just ran a script on his computer to reactivate the gate. Uh, it really wasn't that impressive. Okay. But, but he we, deactivated the gate. Um, I don't think he deactivated the gate. And who did? Hold on, the, the uh, gate was deactivated after we went through. No, oh, I oh know. you mean originally? Yeah. Oh, um, okay. Well, I, he might have deactivated it. I'm not sure. Um, we can ask him. He's on the ship now. Uh, we huh. took him. Everything took him I've along. always heard has said that that kind of stuff is is crazy hard to get through. So, then, pro- then I'll tell you this: it probably wasn't him. Huh? He talks a big talk, but is he uh, part of Periapsis? Um, I suppose we, we we might have to question him more. Maybe maybe they brought him along as a contractor. Um, huh. it, their their leader didn't seem too broken up about leaving him with us. Interesting. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I got things in hand. I'll let Kalaya know you want to meet up with him in like an hour or so and get yourself looked at. <laughs> eh, probably a good idea. I don't feel too hot, to be honest. She just makes a shooing gesture. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll head off then. <laughs> OK, yeah, um, what, two people at one HP. Yeah, uh, three HP. Yeah, Comet was at at one before he realized he should have healed in a previous session. I guess so. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. Rock and well, Evelyn goes down. Uh, when Dine finds her. Um, and you're able to help. Uh, her out rock you arrive while um while dine is still tending to evelyn um but you three uh have met up in the med bay dine just immediately begins um uh, trying to sew up or deal with the uh the larger wounds um using what tools he has and then just starts, and then after he seals those up, he starts working on the lesser wounds and then basically gives them some painkillers. He's just working like quietly and efficiently, just trying to get it done as fast as possible because he knows the just anything could happen on this type of mission. You know, Dine, um, I had a uh, guest appearance on. A soap opera where I played a doctor. Uh, well, that's great. Did uh, did it teach you to sew your mouth shut while you're being worked on? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> well, I certainly had better bedside manner. Well, bedside manner doesn't really matter when you're dying. Well, <laughs> you could always, you know, soften the news. Uh... I, uh... I'd like to think Evelyn's just sitting in the corner because she's still kind of, you know, recovering from her wounds and is just laughing at this exchange. <laughs> well, I... Are, so, are yeah, eventually, yeah. From Evelyn being drunk. Um, I mean, yes. I wanted to just check uh, one thing. So you locked... Uh, it, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Fucking, I forget his stupid name now. Uh, ruination, ruination, conditioning. conditioning. <laughs> you locked him well, up in the same in the same group of rooms that the other two prisoners were. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, yes. cool, cool. I just wanted to double check something. See, that's why I nicknamed him Remy. That's easy to remember. <clears throat> that and I, you locked the door and then cut the power to the door, correct? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Like, maybe we'll get him a candle or something, but the, given the fact that he's a, literally a hacker, it means I don't even want to give him the chance to hack anything. I mean, he doesn't have an axe. No problem, right? True. <laughs> Earlier, uh, when he mentioned Sid, did I take that to mean the um, the SDD, or was that something else? Yeah, the CDD. Sometimes people call or it Sid. The, not the SDD. Yeah, CDD. Okay. So he, he has connections to that, or at least he thinks he does. Well, it could be that he is that skilled. I mean, we don't know. We have our assumptions. He might be. He seems. He seems the kind that uh, his his uh, bark is bigger than his bite, though. Well, let's hope that bite doesn't come to bite us in the ass. Yeah, I guess so. I'm gonna talk to him uh, uh, afterwards and and see if he knows anything useful. Well, af after a while, I'll give everybody the green light and tell them to go easy. Still, while I may have patched the wounds, they're still like some of them were near fatal. So let's let's not do that again, please. At least not for another couple of hours. <laughs> I don't think anyone's in disagreement there. Have you ever have you ever put two stims in someone at once? <sighs> no, but I've almost had to in the past. Let's just say I don't think it's a good idea, unless you're trying to kill them. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll I'll uh, say okay. Well, I'm gonna go back up to the bridge and and uh, debrief with Kalyan. If anyone wants to join. I mean, I'll be piloting it, but I I don't want to be a part of the debrief. Too bad. You're part of the debrief. <laughs> Dine. Dine just say, well, I mean, I treated you guys. Now I need to treat myself. So I'll be here for a little bit. Uh, Well, actually, the question is brought up. Did you discuss the other prisoners? Um, did I discuss them? it with who? Uh, oh, just, just, uh, well, just in general. Did you talk about it? Uh, yeah, because I... I um, what are we doing with them? Are we dropping them off somewhere? Are we giving we'll, them to Kalyan? We'll drop them off somewhere. Um, well, Kalyan wants them. I mean, oh, it's his call, I guess. It's. He's I'll the, ask. I'll ask Kalyan if he's interested. Well, I mean, if we're giving him prisoners, we're setting a precedence a bit with the people that we just fought. We're probably going to have to work with or against them again at some point. Also. If we are doing that, we should ask for money for it, since that's not part of our arrangement in the first place. Um, I mean, I, 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 I just want you to keep I, everything, you know, in scope for what decision we're making here. I'm not real interested in in keeping them around. Um, I'd sooner be rid of them. Um, but. Well. If we let them go, they'd probably like us better. We did let their leader go, and we also took care of, well, that annoying guy. Well, that's sort of, you know, what I, I want to, um, I want, want our reputation to be if you, if you deal with us, if you negotiate with us, we're not unreasonable. That's and we're not like vindictive. Yeah, um, unless Coline has any huge objections, I think we just drop them off somewhere. Huge objections with? With us doing our, that. I think our big problem right now is whether or not we have the time to drop them off. Um, well, that, that's, that, it's not a priority. Once we get Coline safely to his, his meeting uh, and our mission, his 
complete, we can we can drop them off at a station or planet. Doesn't matter. For now, they stay on the ship, though. All right. Any objections to that course of action? No, not at all. No. Go. All right. Um, so I'll head back up to the bridge once I'm uh, patched up here. Uh, and when I when I reach the bridge, I'll ask Torsey to um, patch me in with with Kalyan. All right. Well, uh, while that's happening, yeah, I totally. would actually like to do something. Yeah, tell me. Uh, I would like to send a message to Tor, my my contact, who uh, almost gave us a job. Yes. And ask him if he knows anything about the CDD and their ability to hack gates. Uh, okay. Yeah, are you sending this as a normal message? Just, just like, as a normal message. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, it might take a day or two to get back to you, but yeah, you include the info you want. So if you're going to send a message, you might as well ask anything you want to send at once. So yeah, just like I will ask tell me about knows, the CDD and like what. And if they have a history about hacking gates or if he knows someone that has successfully done that before. OK, yeah, uh, you send off that message and you imagine he'll get back to you in a couple days. Yeah. OK, all right. So Astro, as you uh, climb back into the bridge, newly bandaged up uh, kind of um you know favoring uh one side a little bit more than the other yeah. um uh you get into position and Taurus is like all right um i can uh call Klein when you're ready all right yep i give him a ring all right here we go uh she pulls up uh the relst uh and Klein immediately answers and she puts him up on the main screen for you um and Kalai comes on. Ah, Astro, uh, it's good to see you. Uh, I trust that, aside from the scrapes uh, that your tech has told me about, that you're okay to carry out the mission further. Uh, yep, we're still we're we're still functioning. Good, um, because this is of utmost importance. I'm going to need you for this. Agreed. Yeah, uh, you have our full support. Um, Doc patched us up pretty good, and you know we're ready to continue. So, what happened in there? Um, well, we ran into some resistance. Um, we encountered uh, the leader, Periapsis, um, and he's some sort of chainsaw wielding maniac. Uh, that's odd. I uh, wonder what kind of commander he is. I normally I would expect him to have stayed with the ship, but I guess that was the ploy that he faced you in person. Odd. I've always found periapsis odd. Yeah, it was it was uh, quite a surprise for us, um, especially, you know, seeing how he was some sort of decked out cyborg with uh armor skin and chainsaw arms um, that is uh information i'll uh i'll start a start a dossier on him that was the commander uh crustaceous ripkus right we're gonna have to keep an eye out for him in the future correct yeah yeah, he's, he's not someone to be trifled with, but uh, he also is one that knows when he's beat. Uh, and fortunately, uh, you know, he agreed to to step back and let us through. Um, you know, but that being said, uh, once we reactivated the gate, uh, it also activated a distress beacon uh, that will notify Corsac. So they're probably on their way to the gate now. Shouldn't be a problem as long as we continue uh, moving forward. Uh, but just wanted to let you know. Um, mm. I'll, I'll turn to Torse and say, um, how many gates left do we have to traverse? 
Uh, well, according to the coordinates uh, Kalyan gave us, we have two more jumps ahead of us, and then we're going to be going down well slightly to meet in, looks like some sort of asteroid field. Well, uh, speaking back to Kalyan, I'll say, do you, do you anticipate we might meet with more resistance before we reach asteroid field? It's very possible. This ploy from periapsis while not unexpected isn't isn't exactly i i said wasn't unexpected but it was slightly they're not who we expected to interfere with us um i know that we were going to be making waves with all of the factions uh in the system doing this deal um but we weren't sure who was going to take the jump at us i'm personally surprised it was periapsis I think maybe someone might have been paying them. Hmm. That does make sense. There are instances, uh, I mean, even we've done it, where we've paid other groups to take action in our place when we wanted to run a false flag operation. Yeah, that's that's my hunch, but... Um, and I thought uh, Rictus had said something along those lines, but... You know, I'm not sure what their motivation is. Periapsis, um, to be honest. the motivation's always money and power. Those are the things they care about. Yep. True enough. True enough. Um, well, anyway, how, how'd your ship fare? Um, Do you take any uh, significant damage? None that's... None that endanger any of the systems. Uh... We mostly fired uh, many kind of long-range testing shots at each other, you know, dialing in ranges and and trying to score hits while exposing ourselves to very little danger. I thought they were just, it seemed like, you know, they were working as much a delaying tactic as we were. Uh, Our goal was just to make sure they didn't notice you going into the gate and but they were they weren't going full on if you know what i mean yeah so you both were sort of holding off my ship's faster off. but i'm sure that their ship had more firepower it's interesting hmm well if you come up with anything let me know i can only assume we're not done with them yet um, so we have to be on our guard. I, uh, me and my crew will think further on this, you know, and we'll keep you apprised of any new developments. Um, in the meantime, I would feel more comfortable if you came back to our ship. Uh, I'll leave the decision with you, but, um, I'll feel better because in an emergency, if we need to jump away, uh, and take you to the meeting site. We can do that. Mm. I know it wouldn't be ideal. Yes, I still see the the benefit of this. I'll be over with my guards. Um, let's rendezvous before we jump at the next gate station, and I'll make the transfer then. Uh, very good. All right. Well, is there anything else? That's it for all. For for now, I mean, <laughs> sorry, the uh, combat uh, rendered me unable to communicate uh, very well right now. So I might have got a little concussion. <laughs> well, take five, Captain. You've done good work. I'll see you in a few hours. You too. All right. Bzz. Screen turned off. All righty. Well. Um, let's just, uh, be on our guard. Um, I wonder if Periapsis plans to follow us now that we've gone through the gate. More likely they're just trying to slow us down for something else. That could be too. Could explain why they weren't, um, fully going at it, um, you know, in the ship to ship combat. Maybe those prisoners will be of use yet. It could be. 
probably probably should let them know what's going on though. I think it's only fair. Who the prisoners? Yeah. They don't need to know anything. Okay. They just need to stay in their little rooms and not cause trouble. I mean, at this point, like Dine will probably come up to the bridge. Probably. Just I mean, say, it, we should at really least be speaking to the uh to the kid. Remy. Oh Whatever yeah, I'll I'll, I'll 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 talk uh, to Mister Cool Hacker guy. Um, you're he's harmless. Hack. He's harmless enough. Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not too worried. But you know, just precaution. Maybe maybe, maybe we can like give him some lights at least. I would but, like, like to know if he he knows anything about the um, CDD's involvement in all this, or if he's just uh, if he's part of Periapsis or he's just some some random guy they picked up. Um, I, so I was gonna sorry real quick. Uh, I was gonna make some sandwiches. Like I mean, we should at least feed the prisoners, you know. Like if if it's gonna be a while, you know, like give them some grub or something. I got. Is, s- uh, go ahead. Uh, is is the currency like credits or whatever? It's it's yeah. I would uh, they would be Bitcoin. <laughs> they'd be um. Oh no. Because uh, they'd be like Orion credits or not Orion. Um, you guys are part of <laughs> all the not money. Orion the credits. <laughs> um, comet dollars. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's like, like coins. space bucks. It's like shroot bucks from the office. <laughs> I, actually, I like space bucks a lot. <laughs> they have a, a picture, a, a headshot of uh, Astro on the currency. <laughs> <laughs> they'd be like we'll call si- them credits. Yeah, they'd be like Cygnus credits. All right, I'm gonna call them credits. Yeah, uh, five credits that uh, that hacker guy has gotten into some sort of panel and was trying to mess with something. That's why we killed the power. <sighs> I'm sure he's still trying. He probably is. This, Evelyn. If you were trapped in that room without power, would you still try to hack into something? Yes. Yes, I would. Probably go check on him. Yeah, fine. I'm, I'm, I'm still going to get that grub, so I'll make a quick side trip to the kitchen and I'll check on him. Well, I'll go, I'll go check on him as well. Uh, you sure. can meet up with me there. For, Sounds for- good. So for clarification, what I was going to say is when Evelyn was like, I'm going to go, I wanted to go make some sandwiches. <laughs> I got so confused. I was like, Chuck, <laughs> that's, that's pretty unprofessional of you to just be like in the middle of recording. Hey guys, uh, I'm going to go make some sandwiches. You guys keep recording. Fuck y'all. I'll be back. <laughs> Sorry, but this, this cannot wait, guys. <laughs> I need to make sandwiches I right mean, fucking listen, now. Man, I need my PPJ, man. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but also, like, it's after dinner, so I've already met my sandwich quota for the day. It's an after-dinner snack. There's never enough sandwiches for Yeah, sandwich. exactly. <laughs> All right, so who's going down to speak with your prisoner? Astro is anyone going with them? Evelyn, I is I, I assume is making some sandwiches and then she's going to join me. So gotcha. I'll, I'll get there first. I'll, I'll just say, I'll, Evelyn, make a sandwich for the for the kid. Maybe oh, I, I am, I am. Okay, okay. I mean, the kid's annoying as hell, but we're not gonna we're not monsters. We're not gonna starve him. Says no. says. I mean, I was gonna kill him, but says the woman who with the other prisoners was like, let's just lock them in there and make them pee themselves. <laughs> Look, it, you're right. And then I, I just walk away. Like, I'm not going to deny it. I don't feel like it. <laughs> Who said that, though? God? Yes. <laughs> we just see Evelyn. Go, Evelyn's conscience. You're right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> See, little, little do you know that Evelyn has a unique ability to break the fourth wall. She just hasn't revealed it to the rest of the crew yet. Wait, is Evelyn Deadpool? Oh shit. <laughs> it wouldn't be good. Um. All right. So, Astro, you head down to the uh, crew rooms, uh, and you find the panel for the door uh, that leads into uh, your your youngish prisoner's room. Um, and, uh, yeah, you go to open it, 
Um, and as the door slides open, uh, Ruination uh, is just kind of sitting on the bed in the room, uh, cross-legged, uh, with his arms crossed, and just like staring daggers at the door when you open it. <laughs> I'll say, well, how are you doing? Not good, buddy. <laughs> uh, do you try hacking open the door? No. Oh, I, I, I thought you would. Why would you think that? You think you can predict me? You some kind well, of I, Nostradamus? I thought you're some kind of badass hacker dude, and you'd like be hacking your way out of here. Someone knows Astroflash credits. <laughs> we'll see. Stares well, listen. at you intently. Listen. We don't have to be on each other's bad side here. Uh, you helped us out back there, and I appreciate it. Um, uh, why don't you and I, we have a little talk. Evelyn, our mechanic, is coming with some sandwiches. Oh. If you're hungry. Fine. Um, all right. Well, uh, tell me... Uh, How'd you end up working with Periopsis? Sid hired me out. All right, so you're kind of like a contractor to them? Hey, well, you know, sometimes when the people trying to engage in shadow fights don't know their way through the digital spaces, they have to consult the expert. Yeah, I can see that. Um, uh, well, um, how long have you been uh a part of the cdd a while and what do they what interests do they have uh with periapsis getting hired hiring people out doing jobs you know the norm they're paying well periapsis you know i made my bucks uh would you say it was a better paying job than other jobs you've done before. It like gauges you a little bit. What are you pushing for? Just trying to figure out what their angle is here. They put up the cash. It all cleared out. I got my fee. Sid got its fee. All right. Well, did you it also... It was a dangerous mission. They wanted us to hack a... Corsac gate station that costs some yeah. cash I was gonna ask you about that how did you take down this station obviously it hasn't gotten through your head who you're talking to uh, I guess not but that's that's a pretty hard thing to hack did you have any help ruination conditioning helps others he doesn't need help. Uh, I, I should rephrase. Did you help anyone? Yes, I helped the periapsis fools take down a gate station. Uh, how long did that take you? Oh, you know, a few hours. Interesting. Um, did you run into, like, any uh, security measures that uh, might have triggered when you turned it back on? Well, I mean, a lot of that stuff's hardwired. If it detects that it's been off, it just immediately sends a signal when it turns back on. That's what you saw when we were leaving. Yeah. If All I had right, to guess, well I bet whenever they turn on those gate stations, it always sends out a signal. There wasn't a way to bypass it. It's hardwired into the system. But if I had to guess, they just radio, they just send a message back home saying, hey, this is the SOS that means we're turning the system on. But if they get one of those signals and they don't know who turned it back on, then they investigate. It's a smart system. They set it up pretty well. Makes sense. Um, did, did Periapsis have any other plans for you? After after the gate. Yeah, 
listen, I was supposed to go in with them, take down the station, wait for them to do whatever secretive bullshit they were doing. And then after I brought the station back up, they were supposed to take me back home and give me a little bit of extra money to keep it under wraps. Because normally, when someone of my caliber pulls off a feat like this, we get to add it to our resume. It ups our uh, commission price. But I was supposed to keep this on the down low. Well, it seems like it's too late for that now. Yeah, fuck them. They left me to dry. They they sure did at that. Uh, it seems like you were pretty expendable to them. Yeah, well, Sid's not going to like that. You don't treat Sid agents poorly. Well, what kind of secret shit were they working on? Do you know? He like, he like, like eyebrows at you. He's like, you know, you're not supposed to treat Sid agents poorly. I'm not. Uh, it looks like Periapsis was the one, were the ones that treated you poorly. You don't owe them anything. Yeah, but they didn't lock me in a room. Uh, we just don't know who we're dealing with yet. And apparently it's a master hacker. You could still be on their payroll and you might take over this entire ship. We can't take that risk. Listen, I understand it's healthy to have a fear of someone of my skill and proficiency. But you have to show a little trust if you want to get something out of me. Hmm. How about sandwiches? As Evelyn shows up with sandwiches. <laughs> I mean, I deliberately... I'm doing Remy last because I just don't want to deal with him. But um, we could say I gave sandwiches to the air too, just to retcon the handle that. Take care yeah, of that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's what you've been doing while Astra was heading here. <laughs> uh, I'll walk in and say, like, okay, kid, I got tuna and, or turkey. What do you want? How'd you get tuna out here? Don't worry about it. Turkey. I'm not convinced it is tuna. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. You, you, you get the crappy sandwich. I'll hand him a turkey sandwich. I'll eat my tuna sandwich. <laughs> he takes the turkey sandwich. I mean, the tur- you, you, you think about it, tur- tuna lasts a lot longer than turkey, but that's your funeral, kid. She has a weird thing about tuna. Don't even ask. Bites the turkey sandwich. Seems okay. <laughs> so we're talking about trust yeah and then Evelyn has like has like sandwich in her mouth when she's talking like yeah I don't trust them um well uh you know I have some I, I have my own contacts uh in this CDD um you old man but excuse me, I'm not. I'm not old. He You're eyebrows old. at you again. You're kind of old, Astro. I'm a what they call a Hollywood old, maybe. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Do you know what that means? I'm looking at Remy. That means he someone shrugs. gracefully entering their middle years. Uh, are all Hollywood people like this? I'll say, by the way, do you know who I am? <laughs> puts I was on waiting a, for that. I was waiting for he that. puts on his his, his uh, most uh, you know a star uh, his his most uh, winning uh, grin. Uh, All right, kind of poses. Todd, yeah. Roll a pilot check. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> Uh, does charm <laughs> apply? No, just a, a <laughs> 20. Let's see where it lands. Okay. Maybe I could charm him into remembering I mean, who we're, I am. We're, we're, we're doing some, some good rolls for what it's worth. Nope, <laughs> no, that's not it, though. <laughs> okay, with a four, he looks at you and goes, you do, like, commercials or something? <laughs> Evelyn, Evelyn Astra, just laughs. She just laughs. Astra looks... Uh, crestfallen he's like uh he says well not anymore i don't uh i'll i'll, th- I'll toss remy a bag of pretzels because i'm like okay that, i needed that laugh he catches the bag of pretzels i was like oh pretzels 
Ah, <laughs> pretzels and tuna. That's what all Evelyn's about, apparently. Uh, does this room have like a like a TV or display or something? Uh, there is a personal terminal in this room, but it's been shut off. Okay. Um, I'll I'll say uh, you can uh, you know if you need something to do, I can give you access to my full library of all the movies I've been in. Movies you've been in? What you you like an amateur filmmaker or something? I am Astro Jammin' star movie actor. Uh, winner, or uh, not winner, but nominated for two <laughs> Academy Awards. Wait, two? If I was just the one, it was it was two. So, do you just kind of give up after you lost twice, or, or how does that work? Uh, well, I mean, many, many great actors have gone without winning um, an Academy Award. Peter O'Toole, for example, the ancient uh, <laughs> Earth actor. <laughs> who? <laughs> and I'll look at Rebbe like, who, who, who the fuck is he talking about? He shrugs. He's one of the, one of the original Hollywood actors. Um, I, think, I think you're making him up. Back in the very olden days. Ruination like looks I'm... at Evelyn and just says, what's Hollywood? <laughs> I, I think it's like, what, what is the equivalent of Hollywood in this era? I mean, um, Hollywood. I'm asking Bob I mean, because probably, like, I feel like there has to be. Probably, it, it's not equivalent, but probably Teratella. Because, like, they're in charge of most of the entertainment because they've taken over it. They're kind of like... They're kind of like a, a what's it? Um, monopoly. They're kind of a monopoly on entertainment, right? It, it, but it's, it's more like, like if Disney took over Hollywood, right? Or more like yeah, when, I like to think when. they probably still have like <laughs> a bunch of studios in actual Hollywood, Los Angeles. Like <laughs> that's still. Oh, that's they still probably like, do. Yeah. yeah, it's you know. I'll just say like, it's like. Like thousands of years ago, it's, like I, I think it's like if, if Teratel was a monopoly, it was a place. I think that's what Hollywood was. I don't it's know. It's so the old capital of uh, of movies and movie making. Was movie a nation? No, m- movies, films. Okay. Why did they have a capital then? I. It's just a figure of speech i just mean like that was that was the center that's where it all went down that's that's where you know all the uh, major studios were where all he, the he big actors and directors and starts eating lived. his sandwich he's like you some <laughs> kind of historian i just have a healthy respect for the origins of my profession i half expected astro to apply with no, but I've I've uh, starred in a historical drama. <laughs> he probably has. <laughs> he like he like rolls his eyes. He's like, name one thing I would know. Um, the Deathbot Chronicles. I don't know. Hey, what, what was... those are those those movies my dad's real into. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I play I play the star Vance Powers. Huh. The hero uh, mech pilot that uh, fights all the death bots. I thought they ended that series. A long well, time ago, and anyway, he, won't, he won't let it go. Well, the uh, death bot Chronicles 3 is still, still in the works, perhaps. I mean, we're, we have to make it a trilogy. Just on, I'm just on hiatus from my... my my uh, acting career at the moment, as just you like can how, tell. Just like hiatus. we're on a hiatus of other, from the core systems. And your hiatus involves you charging on to a gate station with guns? Uh, yeah, pretty much. He shakes his head and <laughs> eats his sandwich. Look, okay, this is what we got. This is what I've got to deal with for, um, how long has it been, Astro? What, a year and a half now? I don't, I don't even know. Listen, um, 
back back to the to the topic at hand though. Uh we'd sure be interested in learning anything you have to know about what Periapsis was doing there on the gate station. All right, fine. What I heard from them while I was working is that they were just trying to delay something, prevent some meeting from happening. Uh, well, that's that's uh, that much we figured. Uh, they're trying to delay us. Stands to reason. But why not just um, stop us entirely? Why not just outright... Um, uh, try to destroy us. Why just delay? They planning something else? Did they try to destroy you? Um, well, uh, we got the sense that uh, their ship wasn't going full bore at us. Hmm. Mm, they didn't say anything about that. Something about a delay. That's all I remember. They didn't they didn't say they had like Huh. You know, it's odd. I didn't think about it at the time. But they said something about uh the bloom something or something bloom or uh, I can't remember now. The bloom. Is that like a name of a project or a alias for a some person a call sign hell if i know hmm interesting all right well yeah that's helpful any any little bit of information uh we can look into is there a uh particular place where we uh, you'd like us to drop you off when this is all over. Uh, just get me to a spaceport or something. I don't want you knowing where I live. Mm, spoken like a true hacker. Listen, I gotta cover my tracks. Off grid. If I'm gonna be hireable again, I need to get back into hiding. All right, well, fair enough. I'll uh, I'll make sure to send you uh, the link to my movie collection in case you're bored. He points at the turned off terminal. He's like, "How am I going to use that?" Um. Well, we turned it off because we were worried you'd try to hack open the door. And do what? Oh, uh, I don't know. Do some badass hackery and take over the ship. Surely you're capable of that, right? You all have guns and explosives. Okay, so you, you have some common sense. That's good. Listen, I'm not trying to take over your stupid ship. Even though it has some weird, cool cargo bay slash mech hanger in it. I just want you to get me out of this dumb job so that I can go back... Tell Sid what happened and get back to work. Well, we can do that. You you helped us out, so... Um, I'm going this... to press them on the hazard pay for this mission. Fucking idiots. Yeah, I bet you are. Well, good luck with that. Hey, and good luck with your film thing. Well, thank you. <laughs> I like I'll look pointedly at Evelyn. Evelyn will, Evelyn will whisper back. He's being sarcastic. <laughs> Astro, Astro just shakes his head and, and walks out of the room smiling. Look, if you really wanted to watch your films, why don't we just give him a tablet or something with no internet connection? He left already. Oh, no, I'm following you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, we close the door and kill the power again, obviously. Um... I'll say um, when you kill the power again, you hear uh, like muffled from inside. Oh, 
All right. And I'll, um, is there a way to just like turn on power, but like disable all the other systems? You can lock the door. You like, you can disable the ability to access the door from the inside. That's probably fine. I I, like, I probably just give him some lights. Give him access to the movie collection. And if we can do that without giving him access to anything else, sure. I mean, you don't know. Um, then I'm not going to risk it. You'd have to ask Astro. Astro's ego is not worth the trouble. Oh, not worth the risk. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So in that time, Rock, what have you been up to? Uh, nothing. Piloting the ship. Probably just relaxing. Uh, Torse. Not much to do. Torse is in there with you. She's she's still in operations for now. Um, she hasn't she hasn't left yet. Uh, she is. So uh, how bad was it? Oh, uh, I mean, we're all fine. Fine. You all looked like hell when you came back. But we came back. Sh- sure, you came back. But when Astro came up to me, I was. I was surprised he wasn't fainting. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm chalking a bit of that up to his acting. Huh. Well. I, well, I mean, you know, you get locked in a room with a guy with, you know, blades on his hand and pitch dark with the gravity off. And yeah, Astro said something about that. What the hell was that? Just shrug. Uh, their commander, I guess. Had blade hands? I guess. Cut through a desk. That sounds dangerous. You sure you okay? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm alive. Uh, hopefully nothing else happens and we can drop them off and be done. Yeah, me too. This is kind of what we signed up for when we said we'd take riskier missions, though. Yeah, that is what we said, isn't it? Just We're going to keep flying. Just don't take too many unnecessary risks. I want all the crew to keep coming back. I'm going to need a better definition of unnecessary risks. Mm. Yeah, fair. What I thought I'd have a quippy answer, um, but then I thought about it, and uh, you guys do sometimes succeed by doing the weirdest shit. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't have anything to say to that. So I'll just keep flying. Just in silence, Rock continues to fly the ship. Torse nods and turns back to her terminal. All right, so uh, you all have some time um, as you guys advance to where the meeting place is supposed to be. Um, As far as you're aware, there is an asteroid field that is no more than 10 minutes down well. Uh, from the edge of the system you're heading to. Um, Kolayan had explained that this meeting site was chosen for the fact that it would give you some privacy and you would have 10 minutes of warning if anyone like warped into the system to prepare yourself. Um, But also, um, if the meeting goes poorly, uh, both you and their side are only 10 minutes away from the edge of the system if you need to, like, make a break for it and warp away. So it was kind of like the the safest meeting place that both sides would agree upon. Um, and they're trying to meet in the window of a gate being open. Uh, they are trying to meet in the window of, like, gates being available, yes. Um, the goal is, like, warping in... And then because the gate will be open for a few hours, right? And it's only like 10 minutes down well. So the goal is on the day that you go through the final gate, that's the meeting day. You'll go through gate 
Kolayan is expecting they will be there already. Um, so you will head through the gate, down well to the asteroid field, meet with them. Hopefully the meeting concludes in those few hours and then leave or whatever, but Kolayan assumes that they will be leaving at that point. Okay. So he has a couple of hours to like make his point and make a deal with them. So that is where you are headed. And uh, if there are any questions you have for Kolayan as you head there or anything you want to do to prepare, uh, you have like three days in transit, transitioning from one system to another to get to that uh, two jumps away gate. Um, in that time, uh, I would allow you all to do uh, downtime actions. Uh, in order to do what you see fit to prepare for the upcoming uh, rendezvous. Um, all of you can assume that within that time, you can repair fully and get your MCs fully outfitted. So all your usables are returned. Uh, you know, your mechs are fully repaired. Um, basically, you're, you're outfitted, repaired, and ready to go in that sense. Um, but between now and then... Uh, I want to know what you all do as you're preparing to head to the rendezvous, including not just um, not just like downtime actions you want to do, but also if there's any conversations you want to have or any people you want to contact or other things as well. So we can we're mechs are back to full capacity. And yeah, we're fully like physically okay. Yeah, you can all get a full repair in. Uh. Um, I, I know you said that it's shot for the rest of the mission, but is there any chance I can get a new gun? Or Oh, yeah, you just pick up a new gun. I meant yeah. for like for your time on the gate station. For example, if you had had to engage the people in the control room, you wouldn't have had your gun. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I do want to have a conversation um, first with Torsay um, uh, before any... Uh, possible downtime activities so i'll 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 just say hey, um hey torse I, I was just talking to our our hacker friend um his name's ruination he calls himself ruination conditioning by the way she rolls uh, her eyes yeah he, he thinks he's some hot shot but according to him he did take down the gate originally um so you know like you said that's no easy task so uh he must have some idea of what he's doing. Um, anyway, um, he mentioned that periapsis was, he, he recalled them talking about something called the bloom or some, some thing, some person, some uh, project name. I don't know. Is that a, a, I know it's a long shot, but is that a term you've ever heard? Um mm. At I mean, some point, maybe in the uh, CDD. Sounds pretty generic. In terms of the CDD, I've never heard of that, no. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the C CDD uh, may not even... It, it might have nothing to do with them. They're just contracting their services out to periapsis. Um Okay, yeah, just just wondering if that's uh, something you've ever heard. Um, I'll I'll ask Kolayan too if that rings any bells. Um, and yeah, and, and I'll just like send him a message basically, um, at some point. Um, and just like uh, one of our prisoners mentioned that Periapsis was talking about the bloom. I know it's very generic and vague or cryptic, but does that sound like something you would know or uh, something familiar? No, I guess maybe ask around. I haven't heard about it before. Um, I might ask. Uh, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to ask our other two prisoners. Uh, they might have, uh, since they are working with them, they, they might have heard more. I just wanted to run that by you. Yeah, sorry. All right, I'll let you know if I find out anything. 
All right. Sounds good, Astro. All right. Yeah. And then th the next thing I'll do is just I'll, I'll visit our other two prisoners. Um, so uh, I'll go down to their rooms and uh, just pick one at random. It was the one I visited before I left, actually. Uh, let me check my notes. Uh, because he actually, he or she, I can't remember, um, gave us some good information. Uh, I believe, uh, yes, uh, Emma Donnelly. Uh, okay, she, her. Emma. She's, yeah. uh, she's the, um, she was the pilot of the acquirer that you captured. So I'll, I'll go to her room first. Um, and, um, uh, you know, I'll just say like, you know, how, how are things going? You gain enough food, um, anything you need. Yeah, suppose so. Um, well, I just want to let you know, I, I appreciate the help you gave us um, before. Um, and, you know, I, I want to return the favor by uh, when this is all over, I'll be happy to uh, drop you off um, wherever you want to go within reason. You can't, you know, uh, fly over all over the system here. Um, but, you know, we have no cause to, to keep you on here or, uh, hold you for ransom or anything like that. Uh, you can go on your way and we'll go on ours. Hmm. Does that sound good? Sounds reasonable. You know, you, uh, you aren't much different from someone periapsis might want to deal with. Oh, Yeah. I mean, you took us capture, but uh, you've been treating us okay, and you haven't been unreasonable. So you think Periapsis would be interested in, in working with us? She crosses her arms and just says, well, I've seen what you did out there. Uh, you guys are full answers. I think anyone operating in this region would be looking for your services. And hey, if you let us go, then I won't have a reason to hold a grudge. Well, uh, that might be something we have to consider in the future. It's, um, uh, you know, once this is all over, if you're interested in uh, working with periapsis in the future, contact the Dole. The Dole? Yeah. He's who my boss's boss is. Does a lot of contracting. We make it profit if uh if he's trying to get something profitable accomplished. I'm sure he's willing to uh you know, make it worth your while if you're willing to help out. How do I find this stole? He won't be hard to find. He's who uh contracts with outsiders. Okay. Um so he's sort of like the, the recruiter of sorts. Yeah. Um, he, uh, what? logistics for our organization. That makes sense. Um, what kind of projects, uh, would we be working on? Uh, you'll have to ask him and see what's in the mill. Anything about the bloom? She, like, raises one eyebrow at you. What's that? Um, you haven't heard of it? I don't think I have. Um, I roll an insight check if this was D&D. &D. <laughs> <laughs> See if she, she, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll say, uh, just something I've been, hearing from other periapsis folks you sure you haven't heard that term before make a pilot check all right um Astro calls upon the power of Avandra. <laughs> oh no uh, oh don't bring Avandra into this <laughs> can i can i use my charm because I'm trying to be disarming with her, you know, leading her along to think that I'm interested in working with periapsis and, you know, um, 
and, and yeah. all that because yeah, totally. I, I, I'm definitely saying that for her benefit. Asher has no interest in working with Periopsis. Um, all right, so let's roll it up. Seven, boy, bad rolls today. So I, I rolled a four plus two. Four she plus like two. she like racks her brain a little bit. Loom, nah, it sounds generic. I, I don't know what they're talking about. Are you talking about you talking about drive blooms or you know some kind of flower? Could be any of a variety of things. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of cryptic. I I assumed it was some sort of code word or alias or something, but uh, I don't know much more than that. She shrugs. You suppose, you suppose the Dole would know more? I mean, possibly. He knows a lot. All right, well, I'll keep that in mind. Always looking for new business opportunities. Good. So is he. All right, well, I'll leave you to it then. She nods at you. All right, and then I will visit prisoner number two, who I don't think I've really spoken to before. No. All right, All right so, so uh, yeah, you approach the door, prisoner number two. All right, um, and I'll say, um, hello there, I'm Astro Jammin. I'm the commander of this vessel, vessel. Uh, have you been treated well? Everything to your liking? You need anything? So as you enter, uh, you see a man who has like a high collared, uh, black shirt on, uh, long sleeves. He has like a white undershirt on underneath that just pokes out at the sleeves a little bit. Um, uh, he has like some, some khaki ish looking pants, um, he is wearing like a necklace, like a silver necklace. It isn't like ostentatious, uh, but it's just like very noticeable on his like black shirt that has some sort of symbol on the end of it. Um, he just like as as he hears you come in, he stands up off the bed and like turns to face you and like crosses his arms. And just, as he listens to you, he like nods along and goes. Name's Tom, Tom Fortner. Tom Fortner. Nice to meet you. Well, I just wanted to let you know, um, uh, we don't intend to hold you here for longer than we need to. Once we're done doing what we need to do, we can drop you off at uh, any nearby station that you'd like to be dropped off at. Uh, we could go our separate ways. Good. Um, in the meantime, if there's anything you need or would like, just let me know and I'll try to accommodate you within reason. Sounds good. Um, might I ask, uh, how, how'd you end up working with uh, Periopsis? I know a lot of people who work with Periopsis. Have you been, uh, have you been a pilot for them for long? logs uh, nebulous term got trained by him started working with them long enough to have used my skills a few times all right well um uh, how much do you know about what they were doing on the gate station only what i've been told were you told anything about something called uh, the bloom or a bloom. Hmm. No, no blooms. Well, what were you told? Told that uh, some ruined chained lackeys were heading towards us and to shoot them out of the sky. A pretty, pretty simple mission directive. Yeah, I like it simple. Um. Yeah. So, uh, uh, do you get the sense that the Periopsis is a secretive organization? They only tell you what you need to know. 
They are generous with what we need to know. But I trust them to let me know what I need. Uh, you have any idea what they were trying to accomplish on the gate station? It's not hard to imagine. The ruin chain were making some sort of power play or move. Periapsis doesn't want them getting stronger. Makes sense to me. Why periapsis, though? He shrugs. Um, could it be that they're working with some other group or faction? It's possible, I guess. I don't see why would, it matters. Would you know about that if, if it was true? It's above me. I put my faith in those above that they know what they're doing. Just a, a loyal soldier, huh? You could say that. All right. That's fair enough. Um, well, uh, let me know if you need anything. Uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, in a, in a few days time, uh, this mission will be over and we can uh, drop you off somewhere. I'll hold tight until then. Will do, Captain. All right, just kind of take a look at him and then I leave and lock the door. As you're leaving, you see him make some sort of like symbol with his hand as you're leaving. He like touches two fingers to his forehead, to his mouth, and then to his heart as you leave. Huh, okay. All right. Uh, that That's all I really wanted to um, do as far as like talking to people. Uh, I'll sort of share everything I, I learned or what little I learned with the rest of the crew. Yeah, you can um, assume over the next three days that that information gets dis disseminated. Yeah. At any okay. point. So I'm just saying, like, any other player can act with that knowledge. Right, right. The, 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 the other big thing is, like, um, this uh, contact, the Dole, is, is the person we would uh, connect with if we were to take a job with Periapsis. All right. That's it for me for now all right and then following up um just to get back to dine um you are going to get a response from your contact what did you ask again exactly i asked him if he knew anything about cdd and um hacking of gates basically okay so yeah he gets back to you um it reads kind of like a report um, it's like a few case reports of, uh, gates being taken down. Um, and in about seven of the 11 incidents you were sent, uh, a member of CDD was involved. Okay. But you get an attachment at the end. He said, basically, like, it, it, as part of the email that he sent you the attachment with, basically, he says... I went back 30 years. These are all the incidents I could find. So these 11 incidents are every time this has ever happened for the last 30 years. So 12 total now, I guess, huh? Yeah. Did after, after looking through them, did, do all of them seem recent or are they spread out or sporadic? Uh, it is more common in the past 10 years. Um, but there was one like 20 some years ago, another one like, you know, 13, 14 years ago, and then another one that was like maybe 10 years ago. And then all the rest of them happened in the last 10 years. OK, OK. All right. So while Dine is mulling over this, he's going to send this information over to the rest of the group. They if they want to look over it, maybe uh, ask Torse to to look into it and see if she can find any any further connections that may link it to um, 
to our guy. Mm-hmm. But while that's happening, he is going to go down to the hangar. Um, so previously, I, I have gained, um, at least for, for this mission, that accuracy bonus due to that system that was developed. Right. Dine wants to work with Artemis to continue that and at least start the next step by figuring out what is needed, basically, to content- to make that a more permanent upgrade. Gotcha. All right, so um, in that case... Uh, Let's see, which would be... I believe that's going to be Get Creative. Yes, it was, it was a Get Creative project. Um, I always get lost in CompCon trying to find where they put it. Uh, it's under Actions at the very bottom. Like under the sheet of Actions, it's after like... You know, move, boost, hide, quick activation, oh, all those this, things. Is this inactive mode, I guess? Uh oh, I'm on like the main page of CompCon. Oh, 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 oh okay. Okay. I will indicate page. Uh actions. There we go. Uh oh, I yeah, I got it. Yeah, it, w- it was definitely get creative because I was trying to create something new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, this what I am trying to do um, is to create a new system to make this this more this upgrade to um, my um, ZF4 uh-huh. more permanent rather than just a, a temporary boost. And I know uh, that I do not have everything, but I would like to get the ball rolling on this project. Yeah, sure. Let's uh, let's go ahead and call this your downtime check then. So you can go ahead and roll Get Creative. Alrighty, so I will roll a 1d20. Um, actually, can I... It's not a pilot check, but would I be able to add my pilot skill to it because this is specifically a weapon, a uh, weapon slash reactor bonus? Um, because my... Yeah, your engineering weapon systems and reactors. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you trigger that. Plus two. I rolled a 12. Okay. 12. Okay. Well, on a 10 through 19, you make progress, but don't quite finish it, uh, which makes sense. You're kind of doing like just in between, like in during a mission, you're just starting to get started on this. Um, right. So, you know, to, to get this, you're going to need uh, quality materials uh, okay. and specialized tools. Um, okay. You you feel like you have the idea already and you kind of know what needs to be done. Um, but unfortunately, your systems are complicated. Um, you're going to need specific access to specific things to, to build the thing from scratch, basically, that you're trying to build. Uh, and you're going to need the tools to do that with. So that's what you're you're going to need. You're going to need basically raw material that will be turned into the quality materials by the specialized tools. Yep, yep. Nope, that makes perfect sense. Because I have I have Artemis here helping me, so she's mm-hmm. like, you need this, you need this, we need this. Yeah, she's like cross-referencing things with you. You like are looking through the system, and you're like tweaking things and doing this, and she's like, okay... Um, perhaps if we had this or that, we could, you know, do tests to see if this would work, but I don't have that on hand right now and I don't want to melt my arm, you know? So it's like, we need this material, but maybe not this one, because if we use this one, like it could break mid combat and that would be a problem. And she's like, if you're going to make the containment cage, you want it to be these materials and stuff like that. So. All right, cool. So that is Dine. Uh, what about the rest of you? I think I'd like to... I, I feel like this is basically going to be the 
Moby Dick to Evelyn's Captain Ahab of, of finishing that shielding room that is still not finished. Your white whale? Effectively, yeah. Like, I think it's going to bug her that if we don't finish it, it's just going to be a... It's going to bug her that we don't finish it. So she's going to try to work on that in her downtime. Okay. Um, didn't Didn't you need something specific last time? Wasn't this basically like a you need something extra in order to finish this before you can roll on it again? I I, th- I think I'm looking at my notes and we failed because we need specialized tools yep. or a good workspace. Yep. Um, so so last take, time what happened? Time. So basically what what that means is whenever you get creative to work on a project, mm-hmm. when you get a 10 through 19, what that means is you're close, but you don't have the things you need to finish it. Oh, between yeah, that's right. between Sorry. then and now, you haven't acquired the things you need, so you unfortunately you can't roll on that again. Not until you change that situation. How would we get a good workspace, I guess? I, I'm probably the one who picked this. You but, probably uh, have to dock at a station that you could actually, like, you know, work on the ship with, like, from the outside without suffocating. Uh, you know what okay, I mean? Okay. Like, yeah. you, you would you would need to, like, you're like, I need to reroute some wires. Oh, it would be nice if I could get onto the outside of the ship and get in from that. You know what I mean? Like, I would call a good workspace a good dock for the ship. Gotcha. I think then she's going to look into figuring out where she can get the specialized tools. Like, maybe there's a, maybe there's a port nearby after we wrap up this mission that she can acquire them. Yeah, I, that makes sense to me. Because it sounds like the workspace is literally us just getting out of here, so that was mostly. Kind of mostly resolved. Yeah, okay. I'm not. I'm not saying you need to spend this downtime getting that. That's something that you can just figure out without using a downtime action on. Um, it's just before I'll let you roll, get creative again. You have to have changed that situation. Okay. Um, if I have. The ability to do something else come back to me then, because I I didn't really think that. Far You're gonna out. get into a gunfight with Dine. Got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. You ready, ready to get? You ready, Dine? Evelyn raises her weapon. Artemis notices this and raises her weapon. Evelyn retires. <laughs> that's cheating. <laughs> Dine, that's. Che- I- I'm not gonna lie. That's. I think that's cheating. I mean, I do we, have the bigger we, gun. She she thinks though. <laughs> Can we ever really know for certain? <laughs> I I think that's a safe bet. I I think that's a a, a safe bet of five credits at least. <laughs> oh come on! You should have at least bet ten. Fine, ten. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Astro or Rock. Uh, the main thing I was going to do was try to get information out of the other people, but if I was told that was already done... Mm-hmm. I mean, you you can feel free to, you know, take your own, uh, try your own interrogations. Uh, uh, I'll just, I, I get focused just kind of mentally prepare for what's coming and, and that that we might get attacked during it and everything. I don't have... I don't really have anything else to do, I guess, I can think of. Okay, okay. Um, so, um... So what I would say is get focused normally is how you get a new trigger. Um... But this isn't very long. This is like a couple of days. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to leave it up to you. What I would say is if you're only going to spend a t- couple of days on this, I would either, one, let you get started on learning a new skill or uh, let you temporarily boost a skill for this mission. You know what I mean? Like get focused so that you're better at this thing for the remainder of the mission or get focused to kind of blaze a trail for starting to permanently learn a trigger. Uh, yeah, I'll do the second one. Okay. Uh, so what is rock looking to improve? What kind of, what kind of trigger are you interested in getting for rock? 
Um, it shouldn't. It shouldn't duplicate any of the existing triggers that like come pre with the book because those are all pretty general. And the idea is you want to be more specific than those are because those are powerful because they're general and you can apply them to many things. When you get focused, either you should come up with a new trigger based off of the training you're doing. Um, examples they use are like, you can get a plus two to chess or plus two to dancing, you know, slightly more specific skills, uh, or you can improve a trigger improve one of the ones i already have uh it it should so what it says for get focused is it should be a specific non-martial skill or something personal to your character okay uh can i think about that yeah absolutely i'll uh, pop over to astro while you think speaking okay. of astro um so so one thing i was kind of thinking of um and this could come. This could fall under get creative or power at a cost. I'm not sure yet. Let me just kind of talk this out. But um, yeah. thinking, um, I would like to prepare a, a number of probes that we can kind of drop behind us as we're making our way to the meeting place. And then if those probes pick up on anything um, in in the space around them. Um, like any engine signatures or whatever, we can, you know, they can send a signal back to us uh, so we can know if we're being followed or if there are any other ships in the area. Um, uh, something like that, kind of scouting behind us as we go. Okay, so you're trying to prevent what? Like an ambush or like someone coming yeah. up on you. Okay. Um, so I would say... Power to cost does make sense, um, but we would have to figure out what you're giving up to right. get that. Because you're, to me, it sounds like um, you are getting something abstract, basically safety, safety right. from getting like snuck up on, basically. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah. What kind of things do they suggest? Things are going to go wildly off plan. I mean, the way that I see it, like the, the at a cost could be if, if they discover the probes, then, you know, they know we're there or they know that we know they're there, which is definitely a detriment. Yeah, see, the nice thing is power to cost actually makes the most sense for using during a mission. It even says that as part of the description yeah. for power to cost, because it's basically just like I give up this to get this right. It's not like I need to do weeks of research or something. So this is something you can definitely do over a couple of days. Um, you just need to do something. Um, depending on the outlandishness of the request, choose one or two of these things. I don't think that's especially outlandish. So let me find one thing on here to ding you sure. with in exchange. Um, if it takes more time than you thought, then that would negate the whole reason for doing this. Yeah. Um, risky doesn't make sense. Uh, leave something behind could work. You're going to piss someone off who's powerful and important. Possible. Um, things go wildly off plan. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Need more information to proceed safely. Eh, it's going to fall apart damn soon. Need more resources. Uh, or you get a shitty version of what you asked for. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Uh, <laughs> I like that the last bullet is like, here's, here's one of the downsides you give. Give them the thing. It's just a shitty version of it. <laughs> sure, you can have that. It just sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of you're going to have to give something up or leave something behind. Yeah. So, so here's the thing is you don't have sensor probes, right? So what do you leave behind or give up to duplicate that effect? You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, so... Could I say that maybe I cannibalize some system on my mech and then maybe I, 
I end up removing um a mount or something or a um Yeah, I like that idea. Thing. So That's... let me let me look at my comp con real quick again. So uh like for example on my Mac I, I have my paint job. I have some systems, so like maybe maybe I give up like my. Uh, I have a, a suggestion. A couple system points or something well, just for I, this next. I have a suggestion. Um, okay. Why don't so you have to have um, basically like replenishments for some of your things, right? Uh, you don't have sensor drones, but you kind of do. If you deactivate the, your Lotus projector for the remainder of this mission, then I will say you could use that. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that works. Uh, bu, bu, bu. So I'm going to go into your thing and trash the Lotus projector. There we go. Oh, no. All right. So for the remainder of this mission, you won't have access to your Lotus projectors. Um, but what you do get out of that is safety. Um, you will know if there is any type of ship or something following you or trying to get to you over the course of this. You'll have more warning than you would have had otherwise. Cool. All right, cool. That yeah, sounds good. That's a straightforward deal. I like power to cost. It's just... I will yeah. give you something. You don't even have to roll for it. I just want you to give up something that hurts Return. or yeah. <laughs> is difficult to give up. All right, cool. I like that. All right. Sounds good to me. Uh, let's wrap back to Rock then. Rock, what are you looking to do in preparation? Uh, yeah, so like what's a popular uh, gambling game like cards or something? Like I don't. I refuse to call them space cards. Space, space poker space cards. Sp spards. Spard. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know that's a good question. It, you know, you know, it could be a game like Caravan or something. You know, um, I imagine a lot of things are some. You know what? What's always easy to carry with you and never breaks though? A nice deck of cards. So yeah, I could see. You know, people who do like military stuff like you do or or even like caravan, like space caravaneers or traders or stuff still using cards because like, you know, if your compad breaks, it doesn't take away your access to your deck of cards, you know, like if the systems turn off. So I could see, you know, playing cards still being a thing. Uh, what right. kind of what kind of come up with like a cool game or what what is the game of the future? I'll, I'll let you figure this out, Rock, since you're the one diving into this. What sounds cool to you? Uh, Uno. Future Space Uno. Could be something like. Uh, hmm. What are what are some major, major things that exist in this world? <laughs> it, it could it could be something to do with like like systems you know what i mean uh maybe it maybe it's like a, a card game that references like an old like an old fleet thing that took place one time or an old fleet action you know what i mean like um the outer rim uh there you stars go. stars and daggers it's like strategio but with playing cards cool that sounds good to me stars and daggers it's so it like represents like you know exploring the stars but also like getting stabbed in the back and stuff yeah i like it stars and daggers all uh, right yeah and uh, i just wanted to practice that that's all yeah oh absolutely um would you say this is the type of card game that like people playing in like card tournaments would play or is this something like only oh, no, bored people like, would play or like you know what is, i mean uh, this is like the, the the game that people gamble with gotcha okay so it's like it's the new poker this is okay so is it that level is it like a famous card game that like sure. everyone yeah. would know the name of if you brought it up yeah okay cool i like that so yeah stars and daggers um yeah you spend some time you take out your old deck 
Um, you start like laying out the cards and stuff. Do you find other people to practice with or? Uh, yeah, I mean, if anyone's free, that kind of thing. Just like when it comes up, you know, yeah. you're like, hey, you want to play? Oh, Curry is immediately in. He's like, oh, yes, I, I, you know, I used to have a regular game. Uh, back when I had the mechanic shop, me and my partner had a couple of the local, uh, like some of the local business people over and we would play, you know, just for, you know, small stakes who, who buys the next beers and whatnot. But yeah, I'd love to play. You'll find Dine is an old hand at the game. I feel like Evelyn probably has had some experience. I don't think she's the best, but she, no, she's not an amateur. So do you got did does uh does Rock set up like a basically st- stars and dagger night on the DBC? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's I, like, I like poker that. night like on the on the Enterprise. Yeah. Yeah. Does does no one invite Astro? Is it just everyone <laughs> but Astro plays in this game? Well, he, he wasn't but I there show when up we in the last episode. Talking about it. Yeah, he was, he wasn't there. The boss doesn't get invited to the poker game. Basically. <laughs> The boss, well, we, we, the boss we stopped being space. invited after he lost all his money after the first game. <laughs> I, I mean, actually like that a lot. <laughs> that's that's just like the poker night on the Enterprise. Picard never went to the poker games. Oh. Yeah, but absolutely. They invited him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, that's uh, true. I'll say that absolutely. You get started on uh, getting focused. This is you want this to be like a long term thing that Rock's picking sure. up and getting good at, right? All right. Yeah, I'd say that if you if you do this one more time in terms of downtime, like even if it's a short downtime, you can go ahead and add that trigger. In fact, because this is something that makes sense that your character would have done before anyway, uh, you might as well just go ahead and add it to your player, because I'm going to say that for this, the remainder of this mission, you have this skill trigger. Right. Um, And then you just need to up it again, basically, and you'll get it permanently. So I just, I just don't want those. There. Yeah, I just don't want those uh, skills to rust. As long as you do it again at some point, it'll be a permanent skill trigger for you. Sounds good. All I right. added it in, so I'll, I'll see it here now. Cool. Hey, hey, Bob. Yeah. I thought of something I actually want to do. If you don't mind, like me doing something extra that actually counts towards something. Hmm. If the answer is no, then we can move on. What did you do again? I'm yeah, already. I, I, I already I, I, forgot what you I, did. I, I, I had an attempted gunfight with Dying, which immediately ended because Artemis is a badass. Oh, that was a joke. Yeah. I know. <laughs> well, you were pausing like, wait, does it actually count? No, no, that was a joke. I, I forgot that you didn't actually complete your thing. So, yes, what do you do, Evelyn? <laughs> My gosh, you scared me for a sec. Um, I, I would like, I'm not sure if this falls under a downtime action or is this something I do, but, um, so well, the, that's the wrong for, answer. What I'm specifically looking for right now is downtime actions. Let me tell you what I want to do. You, you make the <laughs> yes, oh, of course. This, this it, he's going to make the call of downtime action. I'm fairly sure. Uh, now I'm doing the Picard thing where he puts his hands in his head. Um, you mean a face Paul? Yes, but we were talking about Star Trek, so I went wrong with that. Picard invented the face palm. <laughs> no one did that before him. <laughs> anyway, that's odd because uh, he's in the future and we're in the past. <laughs> oh gosh, shit! <laughs> oh no, he's probably gone to the past in an episode of Star Trek, right? Yeah, time travel. Oh, oh, it was there during the time travel episode. Yeah, okay, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, you know, prepare slash. Um, Evelyn launches these, uh, basically these small turrets that de- deploy uh, magno grappling hooks. Yes. Launching turds? All over I'm the gonna... place. <laughs> it stinks. Anyway, Evelyn would like to prepare a large number of these for the meeting. And then the intent is that she's going to set these, as we're like showing up to the meeting, she's going to attach these to some of the asteroids. And so if we ever need to make a quick escape or maybe the they call in mechs from a far way that these can sort of activate and basically shoot asteroids at whoever's coming at us. Oh, turrets. 
<laughs> yeah. the whole time. Like, what the fuck? What do, what do you think I've been using this entire time? Face turds. Clearly. <laughs> no, I just heard you say turds. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I mumbled it. <laughs> and then Jay's like all confused all like, because yeah, we I'm all like, moved all right. on. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I wait, I'm still, I'm still stuck on the turds thing. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we move on from the turds? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know if it's because it's I already because I already kind of produced these for the additional applications of course. I don't know. I need to do this. Do any kind okay. of downtime for it, or I just I just do I it. I like the idea, and I actually have the specific thing that I'll give you for it oh um, because it it makes it's a good way to to tie this in. Um, but uh, what I want to check here is oh no. Hey, don't oh no me yet. I haven't said anything bad yet. I'm practicing for when it really happens. Oh, okay. Uh, that's good. You can take a skill tricker to prepare for it. Um, so you want to do that. That makes sense. I'm going to call that. Hmm. Maybe, um stall for time or what is it called um yeah that doesn't it's kind of a no. future thing but um so i'll give you it for power at a cost okay if you want to set this up that means you have to give up your mechs ferris slash for this mission really? yep interesting It would it would technically give us more asteroids prepared because I'm using the ones I would normally use. Well, for I'll my tell app. you I'll tell you what you would get out of the deal. Okay. What you would get out of the deal is a reserve called uh, bombardment. Uh, it allows you to call in a, a bombardment once during mech combat. It is a full action range thirty blast two three d six explosive. Is this in um, CompCon? If I can just yes, I I don't want to write go, this all down. If you go to reserves under bombardment, I would be giving you bombardment. You'd be setting up your Ferris Lash ahead of time so that the Ferris Lash would cause a bombardment instead of what it normally does. Uh, I cannot find it in CompCon. I'll look for it if later. You, if you go on great. the so compendium, I went on there. Reserves. Okay. Tactical along the top. Oh, there. Yeah. Bombardment. Yeah, the search sucks. Uh, I, well, no, I, I don't want to speak poorly because this app is really good. And thank you for the answer, folks, for using it. But I just couldn't. I tried searching for Bombard and it didn't give me anything. Oh, man. Uh, but no, ComCom is amazing. I'm not downplaying that at all. Um, yeah, I, I'll take that. I feel like that could be interesting. Okay, cool. Um, so, um, yeah, just mark down that in uh, the next if if a combat breaks out in the asteroid field or even just if you're in the asteroid field and it makes sense narratively that you need it, you have access to this bombardment as a tactical reserve. Sweet. That works. I also like the mental image of just random asteroids suddenly grappling hook and pulling in on things. Yeah, you're you're like in the middle. You don't even need to be in mech combat to use it. If narratively, it'd be a, a great time to use it. Like if you're like trying to escape something or like you just need a distraction or something, you could always use it for that, too. Like I'm not limiting you in terms of creativity on how to use this thing. But if you use it during combat, this is what it does. OK, yeah, I will. Um. I don't know, maybe I have like a switch or something I'll be carrying on me that I can activate if it's necessary. And, Makes um, sense. You know, just for just for for the sake of entertainment, I'll also grant the ability to Artemis because I feel like she's going to be sort of patrolling the area as we're having our meeting. So if she needs, if she thinks we need to activate, I'll let her have the ability, and I hopefully won't regret that decision. By that, you mean you give it to you let you let Dine know that Artemis can activate it and that he has the final say. Yes, actually, I, I feel like your reasoning is stronger. <laughs> no, he meant she's he's she's going over your head and telling Artemis. That's like, you, can blow, you can blow shit up. She's like, I, I see a ship. Bombardment. 
Bombardment? <laughs> <laughs> what? Artemis is going to bombard people with a lot of turds? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. Uh, I mean, you forget. Now that she has access to flying turds, she can set them yeah. on fire. Oh. Astro, oh, no. Astro oh, no. makes an announcement on the ship. Everyone save your turds. Don't flush. We need it for the book. All right, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm mixing this. This is over. I'm executive <laughs> privilege. This is over. This, this, is, this is starting to stink. We're moving on. I hate you. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're stuck with me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now he's thinking how fast can he kill Chuck <laughs> he's within I mean, driving distance pretty fast I mean <laughs> if I had just decided to be a little bit more lethal in that last fight is it too <laughs> late to say that one of your arteries got nicked by the blades and you didn't notice <laughs> yeah you probably oh, would have no. bled out by now okay I guess you're alive um, all right well, uh, as you guys finish your downtime and close in on the final jump, uh, it's a couple days later. Uh, you've had some time to, you know, prepare yourselves. Um, we will call this session here. Um, when we come back uh, for the next session, we will go through the final gate and get that meeting uh, between the ruined chain and um, Contra Terrain. See what happens there, what this is all about, why you're here in the first place. And uh, yeah, let's hope you're ready. Damn, we're getting all this. <laughs> the meaning oh. of life. Oh no. All right, well, thank you all for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Later. Yep. Bye. Bye.